Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to my kitchen. It's fall, so I'm wishing you a happy fall. If you just maybe took a trip and rolled down your stairs this morning, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to everyone else. Welcome to a new season. The pumpkin spice has been unlocked from its vault and released into the mouths of people everywhere. Happy fall. Today, I had an idea that I wanted to make some fall food. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it's food that you eat in the fall. I made it up. I'm wearing jeans, what? Just wanna let you know, I don't know why I'm wearing jeans. My dogs are fighting. Just fall things. I wanted to make a hearty bowl of food that is most commonly known from KFC. It's the KFC bowl. It's basically a bowl of a bunch of different foods that one would eat maybe in the fall that are yummy and delicious. Probably better tasting than what I'm gonna make here, but we're all about our substitutions here, okay? We're making substitutions for the real thing. And oftentimes we know that can be difficult, but I don't care is what we're doing today. Okay, so if you didn't sign up for that, you are in the wrong class. Please exit out the back and you get an F. So I've never actually eaten the KFC bowl. I've literally never even eaten KFC chicken. I don't, I, that's it, that's the anecdote. I don't know, I'm sorry, am I sorry? I'm sorry? Is it good? This is a chicken expert. Is KFC chicken good? Maybe. Oh, you're still here. I have a bunch of ingredients in front of me. I have spices out the wazoo. I have salt, pepper, ginger, nooch, paprika, thyme, many other spices that we're gonna be using in our flour mixture. I also have ingredients to make a gravy because what a KFC bowl is, in essence, is a bowl with mashed potatoes, fried chicken, corn, and gravy, some cheese on top. So to break it down, we're gonna do this fast and dirty, okay? And if you're making this at home, there's no problem with making the potatoes ahead of time or making a bigger batch of potatoes or buying the potatoes or maybe buying the gravy, I don't know. Just make this easy on yourself because no one was ever mad come October at having leftovers of potatoes and gravy in the fridge. You know what I mean? So do your thing. I took the liberty of skinning, chopping, and rinsing my potatoes that I have with me before starting this so I can have them all prepped and ready, put a little salt in the pot, and those are ready to boil. So that's like locked and loaded. We're gonna start by doing the potatoes, getting them cooked, and also making the gravy for the potatoes. And we are going to finish with making our fried chicken, which we're substituting soy curls today because they're super versatile and they have great texture and they're easy to work with. And we have one million of them. So I uh, have here a bowl of our chicken. These have been dried out and they're ready to be breaded and fried. So if you just hold tight right there, okay? Soon we will trudge through some hot oil and some riced mashed potatoes and a giant mess in my kitchen and we will arrive at the holy grail of the KFC bowl. So do it to him with me. Let's plug in our heat source. Locked and loaded, ready for fire. And here I have a pot of rinsed potatoes that have been chopped in an equal amount and uh, ready to be boiled. So behind me, I'm gonna toss these on the burner and let them cook while we start our gravy. For our gravy, we're gonna need some homemade chicken stock with some powder, nooch, arrowroot, miso, flour, some spices, and some butter. I ran out of fingers to do this with. And we're gonna start by making, I think, a little bit of a roux. We're gonna take our pot here. This burner is very touchy, so we're gonna try our best to get a medium heat. And we gotta get our tiny whisk out. And the first thing we're gonna do is add our butter. All right, so the butter's gonna do a little melt, melt in action, and as it melts, we're gonna add our flour. Actually, I think we just add all the flour and just roux it up. All right, so we are just kind of toasting the like butter and flour before we start to add the broth. I think that's been enough time. I don't want it to like burn. They're like in tiny little clumps, but once we add the flour, they'll start to mesh. Not the flour, once we add the stock, I can't even talk. 
Here we go. It's really hot. Might, a bigger whisk might be better, but I don't have one. So I'm gonna add a little more. And just keep it moving, baby. Whoa, keep it moving. This is the gravy train. All right, I'm gonna keep adding. So we just have a little bit left. You're gonna wanna keep just a touch of uh, stock. And the reason, oh, what's this in here? You might ask. It's a piece of potato skin, raw. Take that out. That's been sitting in there. That We'll use that later. This is to make a little slurry with our arrowroot starch to thicken this bitch up in a bit. Sorry, I called you a bitch. Is it hot in here or is somebody making some gravy? I'm making gravy. All right, so while that's doing its thing, I'm going to add our arrowroot to our remaining stock bits. And we're gonna make a little chicken slurry. It's disgusting. Okay, this is going to be added to our gravy and that's gonna help thicken it. Slurries are great because it prevents flour and powder from clumping. Anytime you're adding like cornstarch or arrowroot starch to thicken something, making a little slurry out of it will oftentimes help you and prevent. See, this is completely clump free. Look, here you go. Look, it's clump free, I swear. You want some? I'm gonna pour it. Open your mouth. <laughs> it's disgusting, don't open your mouth. Okay, this is thickening up as the heat penetrates the pot. I actually forgot I was supposed to add these spices. Look how pretty they are. Okay, there we go, thank you. These are my spices, I'm gonna add them in here. I'm gonna add my nooch, add my miso. The miso is really delicious and it adds a really nice flavor to our gravy. Again, I'm a complete gravy noob. I don't even really care for it, but it's part of the recipe, so we gotta make it. This is looking real nice. Now we're gonna add our slurry. Oh, baby. This actually looks insane, dude. It's looking really thick. I feel like we might need to add some water. Is this too thick? How thick is gravy supposed to be? Damn, she thick. It's hot. I need you to reply in the comments. Is that too thick for gravy? All right, so our gravy looks to be done. It is fully thickened, double cheeked up on a Tuesday afternoon. I'm gonna taste it. That's really good. It tastes like delicious gravy, honestly. Super well seasoned. This is good. You want a little bite? Want a little sip of gravy? It's great if you have babies because you just pop a little gravy into their sippy cup and they just can... Don't take that advice. Please don't take that advice. I'm gonna set this to the side. If there are any babies out there watching, just comment below if you would like to have, you know, your mommy put some gravy in a sippy cup. Also, how did you get here? <laughs> it's nap time. What we're gonna do really quickly is we are gonna prep ourselves something that we're gonna be adding to our mashed potatoes. As you can see behind me, potatoes are boiling. It's a boisterous boil. Water's going everywhere, just how I like it. Make sure if you have a high setting on your burner, just crank it a little past that because you might not even know it, but you have a super high setting. It's called turning it a little past high. Between high and off, just has this extra burst of energy you don't know about until you try it. Anyway, that's the, that's the sound of a good kitchen right there. So anyway, we're gonna take some coconut milk here. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you get every drop. I missed one. We gotta start the whole thing over. Uh, and we're gonna take this thick chunk of butter, Miyoko's butter, and we're gonna add it to our milk here. And the purpose of this step is to make our lives easier later, okay? It's like when you, uh, you know, prep yourself some lunch the night before you go to school so that when you go to school, this actually looks like ice cream. We'll save some of this for dessert. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? Mine's vanilla. It's not ice cream, don't eat it. We're gonna melt this in the microwave, which is short for Michael Row Wave. And that way when we're, potato when we're making our mashed potatoes, uh, all we have to do is pour this, this beautiful <laughs> thick liquid 
And uh, then the mashed potatoes will pretty much be done. So, oh wait, you also want salt here, I think. I also have salt and pepper here mixed, as you can see, and this is going to be added into our mixture here because this ultimately will go into the potatoes and make it a nice, beautiful, fluffy mashed potato. Boom, easy. All right, I'm actually gonna try to clean off the spoon, get all of it into the bowl and just melt the sucker up for like a minute 30 or an hour 30. Oh, look what was waiting in the microwave for me. Corn. Spoiler alert, I don't know if you've seen this movie before, but corn happens at the final scene. Here's a bowl of flour. This is gonna be our dry mixture. I've made fried chicken on the channel before. I think I used, I don't even remember what I used, but that's not the point. The breading is similar to my fried chicken recipe. There's obviously some differences because this is a copycat KFC bowl recipe I found on Pinterest. So there will be some differences. And if you want, you can get the full list of ingredients clicking the Pinterest link below. I'm not gonna read them all off, but it is a bunch of spices as you can see. They're beautiful, laid out, ready to go. So let's add them. We got our ginger, our nooch. Oh, actually, before we continue with this, we have to start making our buttermilk because that has to sit. So. Plant-based milk, apple cider vinegar. Sit, sit. Okay, it's sitting. We're gonna move it over here. That's gotta do its thing for a couple minutes while we add our spices. Tulu. This right here is sand. I'm just kidding, that is not sand. <laughs> That's salt, pepper, other salt, and other pepper. This is uh, dark sand, light sand. This is time, and this is money. <laughs> uh, those are our spices, I think. Uh, I'm gonna try to mix these so they turn into one beautiful flour mixture. I think my greyhound needs to go outside to urinate, so I'm gonna quickly BRB. You don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here, baby. Here's what I'm gonna do. It's actually a cool little trick I'll show you. We're gonna take a piece of potato out. This is how you check if they're ready. You need uh, a spoon and a fork for this method, okay? And so you're gonna take the piece of potato and aim it right towards your face and ask it, are you ready? And then you're gonna fucking stab it because it's not replying to you. Yeah, it's ready. If the fork goes in, it's ready. So I'm gonna go uh, drain those and then I'll bring them back here so we can make them nice and fluffy. We have our melted ice cream mixture, i.e. the butter and milk and salt. That's gonna go in our mashed potatoes. But first we have to rice these babies. We go on ricing, y'all. No, that's poison, ricing is poison. Get your potato ricer. Obviously you don't need to do it with a ricer. I just used the ricer once when I made lepsa and I fell in love with this tool. It is so cool. You basically just pack in the cooked potatoes in here and out comes smooth, Silky potatoes, it's amazing. All right, the potatoes are done and they're looking incredibly delectable. If you want a bite, there you go, that's your bite. They taste incredible. Oh my God, they're so good. They're like fast food mashed potatoes. They taste buttery. The ricer made them super smooth and soft. That's what I'm talking about. Now it's time for the main show here, okay? We are gonna make our fried chicken. Get your Le Creuset out. Get your thermometer out and get your oil out because yeah, it's frying time. Why is there a fly in here? All right, so this buttermilk has been 
uh, chilling, sitting specifically for about, I'd say 10 minutes. So now we're gonna add our egg replacer to it and then this will have become our wet mixture. At that point, this is a drill that you and I, we've done this before, okay? It's wet hand, dry hand, oil, okay? So we're gonna plunge our chicken substitute, our soy curls into the wet mixture, then into the dry mixture. And depending on how thick they look and how much we like that, we might go double dip, but I don't think we need to do that. I think we get a good wet dip and then a good dry dip will be good to fry them. I think we're gonna try to fry at about 350 to 360 degrees. So let's heat up this oil. Let's get breading. Let's go get this bread. All right, it's frying time. Get your butts ready, okay? It's gonna be hot. This oil is very hot. It's like 350 right now. So I'm gonna put a couple pieces into the wet mixture, get them nice and wet, and drop them into the dry mixture. Get them dry, super simple. That's what we're looking like right here. I think that's a good looking piece of breaded chicken. So let's pop it in, and we go again. Also make sure as we, with when we always fry, you don't wanna overload your oil because it will lower the temperature of that oil if you put too many things in at once. This is easy. I eat frying chicken substitutes for breakfast. Boom. These are nice little, I feel like the soy curls work on so many levels for a chicken substitute. They're like the perfect shape for this. They're like little skinny little chicken pieces. Kind of exactly what you would find on a KFC bowl, I feel like. I don't know for sure, because I've never had one, but I think we're good. This is looking good. It's hot and uh, soon we're gonna have a nice delicious KFC bowl in front of us that we're gonna be able to try and embrace the season of fall. Just wanna make sure that these don't burn. I think you're gonna to wanna to cook them for maybe a minute to a minute and a half, not longer than that. They're small pieces and they're, you know, it's also, it's fake meat so you don't have to worry about them cooking through. All right, y'all, it's grand finale time. It's time for the KFC bowl to spawn into my kitchen so I can eat it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take this ice cream scooper and we're gonna get some savory ice cream. That's what I like to call mashed potatoes. And this is it. Boom. Okay, we're gonna do maybe like four of those. Two. Maybe three. I feel like three it's a good amount to start with. We're gonna set aside our scooper. We're gonna put some, Bunny is drinking water. We're gonna put some chicken on top. This looks to be like a good amount, I think. All right. Then we're gonna take some corn and sprinkle all over the top, like a healthy bit of corn. We're gonna get our epic mature cheddar. And we're gonna shred some two types of cheddar here, okay? We're not messing around. Okay, that's done. And we're gonna take pre-shredded day of cheddar and put it on top as well. That's looking good. And the last thing we are doing is our gravy. The gravy train has reached its final destination. All right, here's our gravy. It's looking nice and ready and maybe just one healthy scoop of this to go on top and we're gonna be good. Oh my God, hello? That looks insane. Okay, this is fall food, y'all. We did it to him. We did it to him. This looks a little bit insane, how delicious it looks. The cheese is starting to melt. You gotta stir it around. I think this is one of those bowls where you really have to mix it before you take a bite, right? It's like a, it's an imperative step. So you get everything in one bite. All right, first bite, okay? Time to see what all the hype is about. What, dude, that is insane. That is so good. That feels like someone took Thanksgiving food and just deep fried everything. 
It's like fast food Thanksgiving. It tastes so good. The potatoes are so rich. The gravy is amazing and the chicken is crispy and delicious. Oh my God, this is just, this is special right here. This is some fall food right here. Absolutely did it to him. Absolutely did it to him. I'm actually gonna add a couple extra pieces of chicken because I think it looks better where the chicken is on top. Look at that, dude. Oh my, oh boy. We did something today. Y'all really thought you did something. No, we did something. Oh my God, I wanna eat this whole thing. It's just so like hearty and it's flavorful and salty and crispy and creamy. Everything you want, dude. Well, we have arrived at the point in the episode where I thank you for joining me and I thank you for your help because I couldn't have done this alone. You helped, you did. So you get a bite, only one bite. Split it amongst yourselves, okay? No fighting, hurry up. It's gonna fall off the fork. Are you cleaning that up? I'm not gonna clean that up. All right, well, thanks for joining me and I'll KF, see y'all later.